streaming again. Nice. Is it looking fine now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's actually good. Let's see what the quality okay. is like on stream. Yeah, it's working completely fine. Hey, if anyone manages to see this in chat, you're welcome to watch. You know, I'm not really streaming any games right now, and there's not going to be a catboy voice over this because this is a serious discussion. You know, I'm just saying that I'm with a friend over here, and no intellectual properties leaked over here. This plant is simply just a very pilot scale, so everything here is technically allowed to be shown. By that, I mean we're just making sure we don't end up violating any weird things because it's its own design. So, you know, we can, we, can, we can just talk about it or do you want to explain? Because, you know, I, I, will, I can explain, actually. I know, while I'm just talking, there's no viewers right now anyway. So, yeah, let's continue along as if there is no stream, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I can basically explain what this does, if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. If you, if you want, you could explain it just for the people viewing it that might view it later, actually. Because I'm also going to upload this on YouTube, by the way. You see, that's what okay, I can yeah. do. I can upload this on YouTube at the same time, man. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll just briefly explain what this does. Yeah. So this is basically a, a sort of miniaturized version of a bottling assembly for isopropyl alcohol. Normally isopropyl alcohol comes in like 70% and 90%, but we're going to do 70% and 80%. So the idea is to fill this tank with the amount of isopropyl alcohol that would amount to 70%. And uh, these two tanks here would amount to about 30% of the water needed. But on the other hand, we want this to be like a dual operation mode. So we don't have to build like a, a whole separate other plant. We'll just have two in one. So I'll just switch the color to maybe red. Red or some yeah. other color just to show the other end. Yeah, so when these two when these two combine, this would form this would give us like eighty percent isopropyl alcohol, but we would need twenty percent water. So this here, only one of these canisters, the lower one, would be twenty percent water, and these can be controlled with these valves in the back. At the back here so let me cancel that off yeah. so this is how it works so we have the exact amount of alcohol that we need like for example you want 70 percent this valve will be open this valve here will be open so the excess of alcohol could flow out this pipe down here and to through here and this here will be led back to a barrel of isopropyl alcohol basically yeah okay and uh, but however if we want 80 percent isopropyl alcohol this is what we do we oh uh, one sec let me get a different color All right. yeah say if we want 80 percent isopropyl alcohol we then want these two canisters to be opened. So, uh, well, these two canisters to be filled. But however, if you keep filling this one, excess isopropyl alcohol will just flow out here if this valve is open. So this valve is closed, and that will allow the isopropyl alcohol to flow through the top and down and out to the isopropyl alcohol barrel. Because isopropyl alcohol is kind of hygroscopic, we want minimal exposure to air as possible, basically. Yeah. I mean, with the water, it's just mm -hmm. water. And I mean, 
you know. That's yeah, gonna, just water. Uh, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to lead to a drain at the back over there, you know. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, this will be some river or something. Yeah, some kind of river. Oh, my God. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I wonder mm -hmm. if anyone actually decides to view a stream about plant design. Uh, that would be hilarious, you know. Well, the chemical engineers at um uh, yeah, we have a viewer by the way we have a viewer hey what's up man welcome to plant design you know <laughs> you can tell that this is a different time when i usually stream so you know that i'm up to other stuff you know it's either this or i'm currently just doing some experiments at home electrochemistry yeah 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 yeah, well, and at the bottom here, when these um, when these canisters are filled, all to whichever desired um, concentration of alcohol we need, these valves will be opened, and uh, um, it'll flow through here, through this T down here, yeah. and it'll come out at this um, this is just a safety valve, in case like we forget one, in case we forgot one of these open. And well, we don't want it to flow on the ground, so ah, yeah, well, that's bad. This is just as a safety measure, yeah. And lastly, there would be a, a bottle here, which would be one US gallon, uh, 3.8 liter bottle, or however it is, yeah. God damn it, from, from freedom units. Yeah. The freedom units, you know? We need fucking gallons, not liters. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I wish I could turn on the cat boy voice. I mean, I but I, I don't want to... I mean, I, I just woke up like a while ago, you know? So it's going to sound very groggy. And also, it's not really good for explaining, and I'm not playing any games right now, so I don't think my cat boy voice is going to work very well, to be honest. I wonder who this viewer is. Is it just myself, or is it actually someone else? Because they're not typing in chat right now, so I don't know. <laughs> it would be really funny if it's just you. Dude, imagine. Dude, imagine if it's just me. You know, I, I can actually link this out right now, like designing process equipment. <laughs> oh, it's not perfectly aligned. Oh, it should be. Yeah. I, I'm not going to post right on that server. One sec. And here we have, um, well, a Venturi scrubber, but maybe for an extreme. I could probably go through the, um, these calculations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are, um, well, apparently here, I, I'm not sure if, where you're from, cells non schedule 40 PVC. I don't know what they call those actually. Those are just four inch. But yeah. I just... you know, the, I'm pretty sure they're out there. Oh, you have the outer and inner diameters, so it wouldn't matter either. We could just convert the, you know, the units ourselves if, you know, of course you can also show them the, uh... okay, you can continue. I'll let you explain. Maybe you have, you know, because, I mean, it's your project. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about 4-inch non schedule 40 PVC is that the inner diameter is 4.5 inches. Believe it or not. How? Crazy. What? 
Oh, so I, it's not I have actually no idea. four inch. Like, but the inner diameter is actually four yeah. and a half inch. God damn, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. And um, some people might be thinking I'm um, measuring the bell end of it. Okay, the bell end is basically like this, right? You have um, a piece of four, four inch PVC, right? Normally, if you want to connect PVC to a PVC, right, without using any uh, fittings like a coupling, they normally sort of like melt the ends here and flange it outwards like yeah. this. So you could just um, so you could just grab one of these and connect it up like this, yeah. like that, basically. So. It wasn't the. It wasn't even the bell end. I um, I measured. I actually measured the end that wasn't the bell end, which was really strange. That it would be four and a half inches, and it says, it says on the um written side, four and a half inch by um, sorry, four inch, four inch, um PVC. I think it's, I'm not sure exactly sure, but it's non schedule forty PVC. It said. And um, it also said it meets ASTM standards, <laughs> which is really uh, weird. fucking ASTM standards yeah. moment. You know, I, I honestly feel like all yeah. some of these standard testing protocols or or fucking stamps are highly arbitrary. Like, I'll be honest, I did once yeah. work on a project that involved testing things for ASTM standards. I literally felt like we're just dunking pieces of plastic in various reagents and calling it good. Now I'm being honest with you. It seems arbitrary half the time, if you know what I mean. I mean, this is a perfect example of arbitrary. <laughs> it's fucking four and a half inch when it says four inch. Like, 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 clearly, clearly something weird happened yeah. here. Cause that ain't that ain't a four inch. That's four and a half inch. Because, I mean, I measured, like, about maybe five or ten different PVCs, and it's consistently four and a half inches. <laughs> so, it's, it's, so it's consistently inaccurate. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, why the hell don't I you mean, just call it four and a half inch PVC? Why do you have to, exactly. you know, it's like, I know for you it's okay, but what about some other poor soul that needs exactly four inch for... Something involving, I don't know, something that involves, you know, fitting in a wall or something. I'm just making a guess over here, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, for, uh, this extra half inch could be really significant for some people. Um, I don't know why they do this, but oh well. Yeah, I um, just call this fucking ASTM moment, you know? It's probably not their fault. It's probably the fault of whoever... You know, decided to make pipes this way, but these are one of the annoying troubleshooting moments you may get, especially if you're designing a plan and you realize that the parts locally available to you do not meet your specs exactly. You have to do some okay. other. So yeah, that's why we have these calculations. You know, we double check. Yeah. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, the inner pipe area, which would be like, um, let's see. Okay, let me just get a top view. Like, if this was a perfect circle, it would just be, like, uh, the area of here. Dude, imagine if I changed the stream title right now to oh, Factorial. <laughs> like, some relevant Just, um, give me one sec. Factorial IRL, because that's what it technically is right now. Yeah. Dude, dude, dude. So... Yeah. Factorio IRL plant design. There we go. That's what the stream is called, dude. What if I actually put Factorio into this category, or or, or some kind of other engineering thing like satisfactory? That would technically still be okay, right? Because that's technically what. At this we're point, doing. you can put um. I fucking swear. Oh, no, no. At this no. point, you could probably put um, troubleshooting ASTM standards. Dude. Okay. <laughs> Remove this. Yeah. Dude, I swear.
swear, we put Factorio IRL plant design. This is that's okay. It's technically technically we're we're not playing Factorio, but we are definitely doing something similar to Factorio. I swear, some confused people if they try to look for Factorio and find this plant. Sign with a bunch of <laughs> chemical engineers. I don't know if they might learn a few things about PVC. There we go. This is a meme stream right now. That's what this is. <laughs> this is a meme yeah. stream right now. Yeah. Can't wait to see it after. Factorial. But yeah. Um, well, normally, um, I'll, I'll continue with basic explanation, I guess. Well, normally, pipes come in, like, sizes of maybe 19 feet here, for some reason. They don't they don't sell the full um, 20 feet, but they sell 19 feet, so... That'll give me, like, 9.5 inches... Sorry, 9.5 um, feet of pipe to work with. Just, so, just, just for all so, you guys. If if it's feet, it's gonna have only one uh, quotation. If it's inches, it's gonna have double quotations. That's the standard notation oh, yeah. for feet and inches. Just you know, in case there are you know viewers later or now who ask questions or in YouTube, they will be able to tell the difference between feet, inches, and whatever the hell you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, the inner pipe area would be like this cross-sectional area here. If it like the circle and excluding this outer ends. Yeah. So that would be 15 point yeah that. And um the inner pipe volume would be this, but this would be the volume for 9 and a half feet. So so we want to get the inner pipe area per feet and the inner pipe area volume per feet as well, as well as per inches. So when we do this, we could we could do our calculations for the volume of alcohol needed, right? Yeah. So the volume of the bottle, which is um, one U.S. gallon, three point seven eight liters, yeah. would be about two hundred two hundred thirty one cubic inches. Holy so, shit! I'm, I'm these these these. As a person who uses the metric unit system, these are making me kind of eh. I know. Yeah. It's, it's making me cringe. Yeah. I was feeling the same way. Dude, I got a. Yeah. I literally got a follower thanks to this Factorio stream. We're doing great, guys. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so um, the volume of as human, we have pure. Oh, oh someone's to... in the chat. Come, you have to show him. No, no, no. Ah, uh, cryptic god. So watch this. So uh, normally I stream games with this VTuber okay. and. Uh... Hey, what's up? How are people doing, yo? Normally that happens, <laughs> but uh, right now we're I'm I'm designing process equipment with a friend, and he decided to stream it for funds. And I, I asked him to make sure that this doesn't violate any intellectual property, which it does not. So you can show them your plant because we actually have three viewers in the chat, by the way. I mean, I don't know who they are. Oh, like, great. And we go back to calculations later. Just show them show them what we've got. Go back to Blender, man. Let's, let, let's see. Just for like okay. a while. Just just to show them the overview of, of everything we've done so so far. You know, the, the whole design. Where is it? Oh yeah, wait. No, that's not it. That's just a cylinder. Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. Just, just for a while. Then we can go back to yeah. calculation. So basically, oh wait, what's happening? Basically, basically this over there. Yeah, this is basically the plant that were that's being designed for the purpose of uh, bottling isopropyl alcohol and standardizing the concentration for consumer grade purposes. Hi, Nanya. There you go, it's already in ya. You said it for you. Okay, that's the only cat boy you're gonna get for now. So yeah, can continue on with the calculations, you know? 
just had to interact with a mm-hmm. bunch of people who joined. So yeah. Yeah. So um, well, basically, to um, well, clarify a few things for new viewers. This is basically here. Yeah, this canister would hold the amount of volume for seventy percent al- alcohol, and this would be for the thirty percent alcohol. Okay. The wa- water, bas- water part, al- alcohol part here, and water part here. So, and this would be on the top here. This would be for, like, up to like this, and this would amount to eight, about eighty percent alcohol. And but with eighty percent alcohol, we cannot add um, we cannot add the full thirty percent water. So we need to exclude this if it's eighty percent. So the bottom canister would be twenty percent, basically. Anyhow, back to calculations, I guess. Um, should I start over or continue where I left off? No, oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just typing in chat. Oh, okay. It's someone asking if they can do this for vodka or moonshine. I'm like, technically, you can, but you'd have to appropriate the, uh, you know, pipe lengths differently with accordance to your, you know bottling facility because you could technically yeah. use a design similar to this to uh you I know do. create 40 percent ethanol from your 95 percent feed stock but you know we're yeah. not gonna design i'm new yeah this could be with um for moonshine as well but you might want to start with a probably easier tropic which is 95% alcohol to begin with. Dude, some guy in the viewer just asked, just asked, like, you know, about a donate button, but I've never really streamed before. It's one of my, you know, so I'm. Oh, Streamlabs. Oh my god, you know, I should use Streamlabs instead of OBS then. Streamlabs. Uh, I've heard of that, but. I mean, we'll just figure it out as we go along. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. This we'll figure it out as we go stream. along. I mean, the next stream, possibly. Yeah. I'm late. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for now, this is just for fun, I guess. Yeah, yeah. This is just for fun. Yeah. But um, I I guess I'll just continue then. Yeah, um, continue. but for. Seventy percent alcohol in a one year gallon bottle. That would be seventy percent of well, three point eight liters by seventy percent. But remember, that would be around two point six six liters, which is. But remember, we're working with PVC, so we're gonna be working in cubic inches, which is really. Uh. Grinch. Yeah. Yeah. So you might, you guys might have to be with this, but anyhow, this would be the volume of one hundred percent isopropyl alcohol needed, and um, we multiply that by seventy percent. So we'll get one hundred sixty-one point that. So anyhow. But the thing is, commercial isopropyl alcohol comes in 99% alcohol, right? So let's just say 99% of of um, X, which would be the 100% isopropyl alcohol, would be this. God, it, it just unbearable to work with these units. Anyhow. So that would give us like 163 cubic inches of um, 99% isopropyl alcohol. So 161 cubic inches of 100%, 163 with 99% isopropyl alcohol. So this would be the volume of isopropyl alcohol needed. And well, the inner pipe volume per inch would be 15 well, 50, about 15 cubic inches per inch. Well, cubic inches of um, 
Well, how how to put it? cubic inches of airspace per inch of um per inch length of pipe, basically. So like, let's just see, just one sec. Okay. Let's just say I have this pipe. You just like and you want to measure like, well, this is let's just say arbitrarily this is one inch. The volume inside this inch would be about um, fifteen point fifteen cubic inches, and the volume per feet would be one eighty. Well, one eighty about one eighty one cubic inches. So like per feet. So this these are like the here. standardized units you came up with to find out yeah. how much volume is inside. You know, otherwise you can manually yeah. calculate the volume of a cylinder. Yeah. That too. But um, I just standardize it as this. So 181 um, cubic inches per feet. Anyhow. And this would come in useful later because like the theoretical length of pipe I would need in inches is about 10, 10 inches. So I could fill 163 cubic inches of alcohol. It's in inches, and this is just in feet. It's just two different units, but it's pretty much the same thing. And all of these calculations are done for 30% water as well, which would be this and this. Uh, wait, yeah. Yeah, 69 cubic inches of water. And the theoretical pipe length would be 4, 4.5 inches, which would, which you could clearly see by, well, this plus this, sorry. This plus this would be four and a half inches, and we could, yeah, yes, that. Just just visually, we could probably tell. And yeah, that's just for seventy percent isopropyl alcohol, and um, all of these calculations will be repeated for the eighty percent isopropyl alcohol. It's just in terms of well, yeah, yeah, eighty yeah. percent isopropyl alcohol. Basically, it's the same exact calculation, you just have to change the height of everything and take into account the pipes above and below of the valve. Oh, and as well as 20% water as well. Yeah. But, um, some people may be wondering, like, wouldn't these, um, like, these connections here, 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 and here, take up um, any space and yeah it will it would Th that will be a thing that would be considered as well so this would be filled up to about 95 percent of the volume total volume so we could accommodate for these um these spaces here, here yeah for example and this here this PV piece of pvc would be like a calibration stick, so this could ex we could um we could lengthen this so it could go so it can go taller to hold more volume or shorter, but the idea is to get like seventy percent of the total alcohol of a gallon, and this is to like more more or less fine tune things, I guess. Basically. I mean, the goal here is that you're going to get the alcohol at the very end of it and see if whether or not it's 70% by using some other methods like a refractometer or, or density stick. Oh, carb, you want to know how isopropyl alcohol is made? Well, they usually make it in... Like they, I think they usually make it industrially. You mean process? Yeah, the actual process of making isopropyl alcohol. You know, a little bit rusty on that. I think it's a cubic process. Is it? Is it? Uh, let's see. Because I know how I know how ethanol and methanol is made. Like methanol is just That's made by I by interesting gas. Question. Yeah, we can Google stuff as well. Because honestly, it's been a while since 
uh, you know, I don't know specifically. We just we're we're kind of just the guys who buy the alcohol. How is it exactly made? Oh, it's by uh, reacting ethene and and no, ethene. What's that? Is that the uh, propene? Yeah, that's propene and water. Yeah. I mean, my my question is, that would make like would that make a mixture of n propanol and isopropanol, or would that actually just make only isopropanol selectively? So it uses a sulfuric acid catalyst and hydrates the uh, alkene. Let's see what it says. Well, oh, these yeah. processes give primarily isopropyl alcohol rather than one propanol, because adding water to sulfuric acid to propene follows Malkonikov's rule. Oh, okay, makes sense. Anyway, yeah. back to plant designing. That was a little bit of a sidetrack. Yeah. Yeah, Markovnikov's rule. If you want to click on that, we're gonna we're gonna fall into a rabbit hole. You you, you want you want to <laughs> fall into a rabbit hole? It's basically one of the rules of chemistry. You know, basically, like it, it essentially is the reason why when you do a certain chemical reaction, you get a you know even if two products are possible, one product is more likely than the other. That's the simplification of it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, back to plant designing before we fall into a rabbit hole and we start looking at fucking reaction rates and all of that. Holy God. You know, that would be funny. Yeah. I think I went through um, these valve systems before, didn't I? Yeah, you already did. And we didn't get any new viewers, so I assume everyone is up to speed about how these valves work, where if you open one essentially will not flow past it and that can denote the level so we can either open the lower valve or the upper valve to fill these tanks accordingly same with the other one to get you know either 80 percent or yeah yeah so to simplify it if you shut this valve off um it will allow this to be filled more up like this yeah so we'll flow up here and it'll flow out the top as you input flow in, into here, basically. Yeah. Um, one second. Okay, he's taking a short break, I guess. I'm so, uh, sorry, one second. Yeah, no problem. I interact with more of you over here if you want to ask, but yeah. But you know, if you guys actually want to see like me stream like factorio or satisfactory i could do that as well but yeah you know i'm sorry if this stream bamboozled you a little bit but we're we're actually designing real process equipment instead of you know the usual game <laughs> showing you guys how the calculation comes into all of this and how all of that comes in and i thought it would be interesting if some people who played the game actually saw real plant design to compare it to you know because it's like for example in games like satisfactory you have stuff like mass balance implemented into it yeah but of course when you're actually dealing with you know the, the idea of designing a process you have to take into account the literal volume of every pipe of everything and it turns out that the fittings he uses has like step steps onto them so he has to find the volume of all of those cylinders as well yeah like um this for example like um let's just rotate this over and turn it over all right he's gonna show exactly like what he means example. right now about the steps inside the joint itself quote unquote the pain in the ass mm -hmm. that that's the what we're that, that he be dealing with as well. Yeah. All right. Let me just um. We'll basically go into edit mode. Yeah. Maybe you can like show okay. them exactly what you mean by the the real joint has these annoying steps. Yeah. Right. Just trying to make them and show them. See how this is gonna go. I've never seen anyone edit stuff in Blender, I'll be honest. Normally chemical engineers use like CAD or Aspen Plus. Ah, there we go. I see what I you like mean now. 
Yeah. yeah. They have these annoying flanges and all this shit. You know, it's these small things that you'll find in real fittings that just annoy the crap out of you because it makes your process a little more uns you know. These little things can mess with your volume. Yeah. And that's essentially what we're trying to, to talk about over here. That because there's there's like your fittings will have these funny things in them, like these obstructions. They affect the volume of the final product, and you know, it will end up inconsistent. So that's why everything has to be designed beforehand. You know, if we try to bottle something and without taking any of this into account, we're gonna get a rough estimate and not know where we we've went wrong. So it's better to know where we could have went wrong versus not. Yeah. So like this um this well here does take up a lot of volume as well. Which isn't too, which isn't really good, and um, to avoid this, like we'll have to take into consideration like this, the space it has. So here. The, my question is, have you when you did the calculations, have you just taken the area of these four slices of pies, or did you take the, or did you subtract the area of the, uh, you know, the squares and the well? Or the flanges, I mean. Um, because there are two ways to do no, this. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't done these as yet, because... Ah, um, oh, so you haven't done that calculation yet. Okay. No. I have to buy um, these um, fittings ah, still, because... Um, this is a mixing didn't. process. Essentially, the goal here yeah. is that we need to get the liquid levels, you know, so we can standardize the mixes. And normally, you'd use, like, an active mixer for this, but we're just using diffusion because we're gonna these bottles are gonna sit in a shelf for however long time. So we're just creating this sort of gravimetric method for you know getting the exact amount of liquid required with the lowest cost possible. Because I mean, if we were to make an use an active mixer or a motor, we then have to think about the electricity cost for the motor, and also having a motor in close proximity with flammable solvents like uh, ethanol needs a very specialized motor. Otherwise, we might start a fire. Except this is isopropanol; it's the same thing. So this gravimetric method is static and spark-free, and it's also one of the reasons why it's both a cheaper option and the better option, because we avoid any sources of ignition in this way. By the way, the pump that will pump it up is a manual siphon pump for now, but we can also use a diaphragm pump, which could be fully enclosed. You see, that's what I mean. You have to think of all of this. Imagine using a regular motor in an in a, in a alcohol-containing setup, Right? Can you imagine the tiniest spark when that DC brush contacts that that back? That's gonna freaking set your entire factory ablaze, yeah. man. You see, this is the safety considerations you have to do whenever designing a plant. You either keep the pumps far away using a diaphragm pump, which has a lot of like pressure, so you can keep them very far away from the solvents, or or you have to limit just essentially make a specialized pump that's isolated from the air you know so yeah all of these yeah. all of um, these problems are taken into account when when considering that's why that's why our design looks like this and not something typical you know because if i was doing like an aqueous mixture of two liquids we wouldn't be using this at all we just have a mixer yeah yeah yes. also um, another problem Another problem with um pumps, which my my friend went, like who did chemical engineering as well, wanted to use um these pumps, but I told him it was um it was it was going to be difficult because we will have to calibrate them anyway. Because um for example, right, say you have um like this is a reservoir tank, and this is a tube going in, and um you can't just have um like a tube just going in because like it has all this well like dead space of air and you're gonna have to find a way to bleed that out, bleed that air out so we, we're gonna have to like um make a kind of like u-shaped kind of thing so and make sure anytime we 
we start flow rates and start the flow we would have to time it perfectly so that well basically when when um one second yeah yeah this would have to be completely filled with liquid to this uh, exact point and then we can start um well the pump flow at a certain flow rate and then then measure time taken well depending on how many how much isopropyl alcohol we need then we'd have to um start the pump but if it has a lot of dead like airspace like yeah here, that's for example affect your volume measurement and everything uh. yeah and i told him that also like um these pumps as well that has a adjustable flow rate could be very expensive as well oh, whereas yeah. um this is a pilot scale this project this thing is literally you don't have a pump yeah. well maybe except the pump liquids at the very top but that can be a very low cost pump that's far yeah. away and the valves are self-regulating anyway so you know yeah you know, everything is the spec it's basically so in total, this probably cost me about maybe uh, twenty-five bucks US. <laughs> Best thing is like you're 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 making a company, and your entire processing facility only costs twenty-five bucks, but it's both ingenious at the same time, man. That that's how we should all yeah. be designing, man. You have to take into account everything. If the cheapest solution's really good, you know, it's creative but cheap. Definitely, that's the yeah. solution that's gonna be implemented on the actual, you know, place. Yeah, what's really interesting is like, uh, it, one of these would probably cost twenty five US bucks because I got these um, uh, half inch. Well, sorry, not half inch. These uh, four inch PVC pipes for I got half length instead of the whole length. Which they normally don't sell here, at least, yeah. for about uh, let's say maybe fifteen bucks for nine and a half feet. Yeah, around that maybe. And um, but the thing is, you could probably just like buy a whole length and maybe make two of these and double your output process. Well, double your work outputs basically by just having well either more people or have a way to let's say you want to let's say we have two of these yeah example find a way to like connect this with this so to like system these and just pour this alcohol is quite literally scalable up to a certain point is what you're getting at like we can common feed like all of these through one pump that's far away of course that could you know control all of the valves and every, like now control all the valves could like just pump it through the top end right and so it's kind of scalable is what you're getting to right this bottling yeah actually you could li quite literally if you had a large holding tank of isopropanol quite literally just have a series of these bottlers and literally make like a, a semi or at least a slightly larger almost industrial scale process in fact that might be viable you know but the question is, you know, it would only be viable up to a certain point because more of these means more failure points. Like if one of these fail at any point, then it starts to become a game of maintenance versus one large mixing tank that's specialized once you're there, if you know what I mean. You know, once you've gotten that much revenue, of course, it's probably better to use a mixing tank at that point, right? You know, right now we're just at the starting. So this is like pilot scale to semi-industrial scale. But if you go any further, you have to use very different equipment. Just for yeah. safety and also maintenance cost will be less. Of course, it's just more expensive initially for that. But when you're when you're already rolling in dough, ah, you can spend a few more bucks. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you yeah, can continue pretty much. with your explanation. Yeah, um, I think I pretty much explained everything. Yeah. So. I guess that's all. Yeah, let's just see calculations.
yeah, that's all, guys. So, you know, I'll, I'll see you next time. Maybe I'll actually play Satisfactory. Sorry for anyone who actually thought this was Factorio, because we decided to meme on it a little bit. Because it kind of is, but isn't at the same time. This is, this is, this is what... Uh, well, I'm Factorio, not going anywhere, but we're just going to keep rambling and talking about other stuff. I mean, I continue streaming. I'm just saying that, you know, all right. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you ask any questions, we could, could yeah, I'll just continue. You know what? We're, we're not, we're not, we're not really wasting any time here. We're, we're literally just, you know, this stuff is already being made somewhere, like, if you know what I mean, so we could continue on with what we were talking about. So yeah. Question is the Venturi. Ah uh, yeah, the Venturi. Yeah, we're 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 trying to design a different plant, by the way, to make uh to make acetic anhydride and acetic acid by the use of of something you might you call a ketene lamp. Normally, that stuff is a very dangerous aspect, but yeah, a ketene lamp. Basically, this is uh, something that converts acetone into a acetic anhydride or acetic acid, depending on what you feed into it. Now, the real problem with a ketene lamp is they're deadly. If you if you don't know what you're doing, you know a very small amount of ketene will kill you. Basically, like this is a Doug's lab video explaining how dangerous ketene is. It's like, it's like. 10 times more toxic than cyanide and it will kill you quicker but the re <laughs> project chemistry uh one second i'm gonna go look it up let's see how accurate this stuff is right now all right and then i'll talk more into about our ketene lamp and about our other stuff let me see this hmm I'm looking at this project chemistry. It looks like a learning tool, actually. Oh. Does it actually simulate reactions? Oh, it, it's a learning tool. Project chemistry is a learning tool. Uh, it seems to be very useful. I mean, I could. I could do that. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh... Yeah, it, it's it's a learning tool basically. I'm gonna check it out. You know, I might actually stream this later. But for now, let's get back to our explanation on the uh, ketene lamp that we're trying to make. Well, we're gonna explain only the we're gonna explain the Venturi part and work our way up. By the way, let's not fall into the rabbit well, hole too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because. Well, to keep things simple, yeah, yeah. Uh, ketene, ketene is really, really toxic, uh, and it's not something you really want to be inhaling, so yeah. um, you want to des design a scrubber to sort of maximize, well, since ketene is a gas, you want to maximize the rate, uh, well, the amount of ketene that mixes with water, like, you want to maximize this yeah. surface area, basically. Basically, an absorption um, that, power is the important bit, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you explain because you also, you know, I came up with it, but if we both explain at once, it's going to be problematic. Yeah, we got to work on that, but uh, I mean, we're still learning, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, the idea is to, um, let me move this a bit, to develop a kind of scrubber to basically remove ketene from whatever workspace we're in. And to do this, we're going to use a Venturi. And if anyone doesn't know what a Venturi is, um, you could probably explain that better than I can. Uh, Venturi is a device which, which creates a low pressure zone, you know, by converging a nozzle and and directly behind it, like there's a zone of very low pressure that can allow to suck in a gaseous fluid or a, another feed stream into the into the main feed stream. And this this stuff is actually what's uh, used for. Uh... Oh, dude! 
Jones. Oh, thanks. Anyway, the, the the feed stream is actually what's what's used in things like, you know, what the hell are they called again? Like fuel injectors. Yes. So your fuel injection system for a car works in in the exact same principle. But in this case, we're using it to clean up a gaseous stream inside the Keating lamp chamber and uh, preventing us from, well, dying, you know? If otherwise, if you don't do that, yeah. well, you're going to be kicking the bucket pretty quickly, you know, and that's not good. And there's also other factors that come into designing the lamp. One other factor to consider is the difference in pressure with the atmosphere because I can tell you right away if your system has any leaks in it. Like, and also, it can also, even if there was a leak, it will still help you safely operate, such as we have to ensure that there is the, the pressure difference between the chamber, the main reaction chamber, and the atmosphere is always lower than atmospheric, ensuring that if there is a leak, air would rather go in than out, you know? And we also have to make sure that the pressure difference between the Venturi and the atmosphere is also very high, and also with respect to the initial s stage of the scrubber. Those have to be done as well, because that ensures that, you know, we have a lot of uh, suction power left over. Because otherwise, if the pressure difference of the final stage of the scrubber is low, it means that the suction power is too weak to accommodate the gas. Or if it ends up being a high pressure with respect to the atmosphere, it means we're really fucked up. Because that means the, the, the entire setup is operating on positive pressure. Oh yeah! Hey, listen, man. If you were to get, like, Okay, if you were to like get like a small bottle full of just a tiny amount of ketin, like let's assume you had like a perfume sprayer, right? If you replace a perfume sprayer with a ketin sprayer, one spray into an entire room around you will kill you. It's that toxic. One spray. You inhale it, you're dead. And you won't even know that you're dead until three hours later when when your when your cells in your lungs start to like deteriorate and just completely get deconstructed. When that happens, you're screwed. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So. It's not painless, cryptic. You're gonna be coughing and drowning in your own blood. You're literally. I think it's called um, uh, pulmonary edema. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't painless at all. You literally be on the floor, wishing to be dead. No, no. For three hours, you'll feel nothing. Three hours later, all of a sudden, you can't breathe, and then you die. I'm not even kidding. It's that bad. <laughs> it's that fucking bad. Yes. You know, when we're going to be using uh, manomet ma manometers in the system that's actually filled with this, with the, you know, final, with mineral oil to measure the difference in pressure with respect to the atmosphere. All of this is important, by the way. Yeah, ketene slowly reacts with water too. Ah, uh, no, cryptic. If you inhale ketene, you're fucked. There's no going back. You have to immediately go to the hospital and pray to God you survive. But your chance of survival is like fucking, you know, you're, you're pretty much fucked. That's why I don't want to build one. And uh, this guy over here wants to build one. Dude, you, you, you basically, yeah, yeah, basically you have no chance of to live if you fuck up one time. Yeah, man, I'm not building one. Yeah. He's building one, so I'm trying. I had to come up with the most safe way to make it possible, you know. Uh. OK. 
Okay. I think that's um, the design, basically. Yeah. That's just a reservoir. <clears throat> yeah. Is this going to be a um, packed reservoir, or is this going to be, uh, you know... Ah, yeah, I see. Okay, never mind. I, I remember. It could be packed. It could be, yeah. Depends. Yeah. yeah. By the way, this and, is the um, final... This is one method of getting out of Kitty. Yeah, yeah. But, this um, is the final stage is just... of the scrubber, by the way. There could be initial absorption towers before this to get rid of most of the Kitty. Mm. Just making sure everyone's up to speed, because this isn't our only scrubber. If you use a Venturi scrubber as an initial scrubber, you're doing something wrong. That's actually not ideal. That's why you need like pre-scrubbers before this one, which is actually good because a Venturi produces a strong, low-pressure environment, allowing for the driving of those pre-scrubbers without sacrificing the... Uh, without causing the entire apparatus to operate on positive pressure, which is bad. So that's why a Venturi is really good, honestly. And and what we're going to end up in the final stage is just some harmless vinegar, which if we want to recover the acetic acid from, if you really want to, I mean, that's just some ethyl acetate entrainment distillation. But like I said, if you really want to, probably just fucking... Make some copper acetate and call it good, you know? Or, I don't know, toss it out. Do not use it in a salad, of course. Screw that. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine using scrubber fluid in a salad. That's like the last thing you're, you you want to do. I mean, doesn't sound too bad, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I would never do it. Holy shit, because the thing is, when you crack acetone, I don't know what other side products you get, but they'll be mixed in with the ketene gas stream, and I don't think they're very safe to inhale, you know? Or eat, rather. I don't know if they're going to be some weird carcinogenic fucking side product, and then fucking 10 years later, you don't know why, but now you have leukemia. Like, I mean, that's not good either, right? <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't making any, you know, chances <laughs> there. So, yeah, rather to not. It's just vinegar for lab use, yeah. not for eating. That's why even if you have a process that makes an edible chemical, you should never eat that stuff, really. Don't do a Nile Red, because I know he does it. I've seen it. He has an entire series called Edible Chemistry. Don't don't ever do that, guys. I think he That's bought. Um, I think Nile Red bought um, new glassware for that. I swear, but on the normal old glassware, that's cursed. If you think about it, I just think that whole <laughs> premise is a bad idea. But whatever, it's it's giving him views, but it's it goes beyond. Yeah. This is not a thing in lab safety, like. That's something you don't do for reasons, you know. I mean, for the hot sauce video. I mean, maybe he used the, yeah, hot uh, sauce the is okay. same steel. But, but did you know that <laughs> Dipa and Hatu, the chemicals he used <clears throat> for the final step, those things are very carcinogenic. Like, extremely carcinogenic. The... I looked at the paper. I looked at the... No, 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 no. The Hatu, the catalyst he used to... To attach it to his vanilla, I think, or whatever it is he did. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Catalyst that. is very it toxic. Yeah, it's pretty bad, and he just fucking ate the final product like it was nothing, man. That's that's cringe. Where is this saying? I mean, he he did test it with a um NMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did yeah. test it with all I NMR, mean, but yeah, um, I but don't I think still NMR is... wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't it. fucking dare, you know. <clears throat> but um, isn't NMR not necessarily for purity? Isn't it? Um, it only isn't detects... mass spectroscopy? Yeah, yeah, it's a that? spectroscopic, uh, you know, method. If he wanted to purify his caps, 